my name is Danny Deliberto, founder of Ladles of Love. It was founded back in 2014. Communities we, we work with are all over the peninsula and um, we're working with 138 beneficiaries now. We've grown exponentially. Um, we've been able to do that because of all the kindness that we have experienced um, from individuals and corporates such as uh, Interbet who just want to be part of the change. Welcome to race seven. Welcome to the 126th running of the five million rand Hollywood bets Durban July at four o'clock on Saturday the 2nd of July over 2,200 meters. Rahil, Sheldon and myself, we're going to go through all 18 runners and present you with a small package on each runner. So let's kick off with number one, Aragosta. We'll show you him winning the South African Derby and then pick up on his gallop at Hollywood Bets Gravel last Thursday. 10 lengths to make up as they come to the 200 and London Roads comes through litigation, Zeus in the middle, Zeus comes home well with Aragosta, it's Zeus with 100 metres to go, Aragosta trying to chase it home but it's Zeus in front the two come together quite closely and Aragosta gets alongside of Zeus, Aragosta Zeus and nose for nose, Aragosta Aragosta's won the world's fourth betting South African derby, Zeus second London Roads, litigation behind it is the Silvano, Muzi Yeni, Mike Tukok for Drakenstein Stud, comes around and Muzi's just gone maybe a neck half length in front and he looks across to Warren Kennedy and Warren will also just push on now and let's see what happens here. Aragosta and Safe Passage and there's absolutely nothing between the two of them. Aragosta at 14 and a half to one, that's on the far side and number 10 Safe Passage. Many pundits were very impressed with Aragosta's gallop at Hollywood Bets Gravel last Thursday. Worked along with Safe Passage. Rahil, I'll come to you first. Aragosta, where do you put him in the packing order? I think Aragosta he is behind the other three olds in this lineup. The likes of uh, Safe Passage, Pomp and Power, and uh, Waterbury Lane, even the likes of Zapatilis. I think he's going to battle to beat those individuals, but. Mike Decock probably has a bigger plans for Aragosta. He's drawing a gate Are number one. Are there bigger plans in the Hollywood Bets Durban July? For this individual, it could well be Graham because I think the, the Durban July could just be a touch too far for him in terms of the horses that he is taking on. And he's won, he won the derby, so maybe a trip slightly further than the 2,200 metres. Sheldon, what do, you, what do you make of Aragosta? Firstly, I didn't give him a chance. And then after watching that gallop, and when he galloped with Safe Passage, he galloped equally, if not better, than Safe Passage. So you've got to give him a second glance. He's got the best of the draw. He's got Warren Kennedy. And of course, who better than Mark DeCock to be training him? So I give him an each way chance. Realistically, he's got to go into the quartets. So there we go. From my perspective, he's never beaten Safe Passage in a race, and I'm not expecting him to beat Safe, fa safe Passage in the Hollywood Bets Durban July on Saturday. But as Sheldon said, you underestimate Mike DeCock at your peril. Between him and Justin Snaith, they've got half the field in the race, and he's very happy where Aragosta is at the present time. Saddle cloth number two is Do It Again. He's already a two-time winner of this great race, finished third and fourth in the last two editions. We're gonna show you a rerun of him winning the WSB 1900 on the 14th of May, and then we'll have a look at his gallop, and then we'll hear from Justin Snaith. Look right, do it again, starting to come forward, three to make up. Crown Tower, Champompa Champizi. Do it again with each and every stride, starts to cut into the lead. Mount Anderson and Gainsford running on. Do it again. You're witnessing a dream performance. That's eye-popping. He's a real champion. Mount Anderson, Gainsford, and then came Crown Towers. The 400-meter marker. Do it again, doing just enough of what he's um, being aimed to do. He's looking extremely well Is do it again, and he knows this Hollywood Beds track here at Gravel like no other. So looking at the side view and the hind quarters, and here he comes. Do it again, as I say, at 12 and a half to 1. Elder de Mayo going for his first victory in the Hollywood Beds Durban July. Spot on. He's a horse that doesn't uh, do much wrong. Uh, I'm very, very comfortable where he is. Uh, he's had uh, four phenomenal runs in this uh, race, and I don't see why there shouldn't be any um, other uh, result coming Saturday. 
horse that, um, especially, you know, you get those bets for the places, the first six, and sometimes punters are looking for that type of horse. I think he fits, fits it. He's doing extremely well at home uh, and is going to run a big race. Well, I think it's common cause that uh, he's my first choice. He's my each way play in this year's Hollywood Bets, Durban July, currently trading at around 12 to 1, which I think is extremely good value. He is my first selection. Rahil, what do you make of Do It Again? I think Do It Again is a massive runner in the Hollywood Best Durban July once again, Graham. If we just look at the runs when he was beaten behind Komiti Dung last year, he's six and a half kgs better off for one and three quarter length beating, and he was unlucky in that race as well. So no doubt he should have finished a lot closer. And then if we go strictly on the Cape Met run, he's two kgs better off for two lengths beating, and he was the fastest to finish in that lineup. He wasn't drawn well. He's now drawn well in gate number two. I'm not quite sure where they're going to position him, but I think do it again at around 12 and a half to one. Aldo de Meo in the eyes, he must be a massive runner. Yeah, I think he is. Listen, I would have preferred it if he was drawn out wide. It is a little bit of a concern for me that he's drawn in gate number two, but he's a true, in my opinion, he's a true mile and a half horse, Sheldon. If we, we don't have a pre de to triumph in this country where you race at weight for age terms over 2,400 meters, for me, he would be the best 2,400 meter horse in the country, loves Hollywood bets Gravel. His form in this race is superb. He's got a wonderful CV. I know you're in the same camp as I am, but maybe you have different reasons. I've always been a do it again supporter from day one. He's the movie star in this lineup. He's the movie star horse. He sets the standard. He's won almost 10 million rands in stakes. And when you look at his record, six of his wins have come at the course. 50% win, course and distance strike rate. And for me, sentimental selection, and he's got the ability to beat this field. No doubt he's got the ability, and he looked absolutely superb when presented for his gallop at Hollywood Bets Gravel last Thursday. But let's move on to another Justin Snaith runner that cracked a good draw, number three, Hootsprate. We're going to show you a rerun of when he finished third at Hollywood Bets Gravel on the 28th of May. Then we'll show his gallop, and then again, we will hear from Justin Snaith. Gentlemen's wager to the inside. Hood Sprite angled extreme outside, four lengths to make up. Golden Pheasant hit the front. Gentlemen's wagers on the inside. Hood Sprite still three lengths away. Golden Pheasant's fighting courageously. Gentlemen's wager on the inside. Gentlemen's wager and Golden Pheasant. There's nothing in it. They hit the line. Golden Pheasant maybe from Gentlemen's wager. Hood Sprite and Donald McDonald. It gets very, very close. July past the 400 meter marker. Just a click or two from Craig Zaki on hood sprayed and they're stretching out nicely so Craig Zaki he's obviously worked his horse today I don't know if he's ridden it in a race not certainly in the last five runs and yes hood sprayed just going through the paces coming down to the last 150 meters and number three on the big day is hood sprayed and there Craig will take now hold of the reins as he is because of the weight he's carrying 53 and a half I think it is he's got a great draw everything in his in his favor uh, a horse that uh, has no excuses. I think everything has gone to plan. He had a great little prep run here. Gallop was, was good. Uh, all spot on uh, for what I think also, you, don't leave him out of anything. Sheldon Hootsprate, give him a bit of a chance, a squeak. He'd be in the upper echelon, I'd say in the top 10. So obviously he's not in the, the third and fourth league. I think he's in the, the B division league, yeah? I wouldn't be surprised to see him running just off them or the back end of the quartets. Lovely for the Villiers to have a runner here. And with 53 and a half on his back, he could run into the back end of the quartets. He won a grade two race during the Western Cape summer season. And much like Bulgarian, he's been kept out of those races where the handicapper may get to grips with him. Justin Snape's very clever at doing that. And why not? You've got to have everything in your favor when it comes to, to the Hollywood Bets Durban July. And he's cracked a good draw. I know you said he's not in your top echelon, but is he a horse that, if you are playing a wide quartet permutation, bearing in mind that we've got a massive quartet carryover, we're expecting that pool to be huge. And the quartet is always a great bet to catch, let alone catch it in a race like the Hollywood Bets Durban July, would you throw him into the back end of quartets? You'd be foolish to leave him out. If you look at the Met run in the penultimate, he carried 59 and a half. He's down to 53 and a half. So at the weight, you've got to factor him in. Rahil, what do you make of Hootsprayt? Like Sheldon mentioned, I think Hootsprayt is the type of horse that you have to include into those back end of uh, trifectas and quartets. He could, be he could just be a runner 
that we're just 53 and a half on the back, will be doing his best work at the finish and could make those uh, dividends pay. With the likes of linebacker Kometi Dung and even uh, Zapatelius, the three old, is a lot better off at the weights. And uh, hood sprays, as Shal mentioned, well, it's nice for the Fulunes to have a horse in the race, but hood spray, I'm not quite sure whether it is grade one material. Well, of course, this is a grade one race, but it is a grade one handicap. And lots of be has been said about the pace and what the pace might be on the day. And we can talk about the potential pace for hours on end. But one thing for sure with Hoodsprade, he's nicely drawn and he's shown in the past that he can go forward and Craig Zaki will have options. So Hoodsprade, for our money, you've got to throw into the back end of trifectas and quartets. But what about number four, linebacker? For me, he poses the biggest threat to do it again. We're going to show you a rerun of the Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge, which will also feature El Mathana and will also feature Jet Dark as the three of them went across the line. Linebacker running on very strongly to get second. Then we'll show you his gallop and hear from his trainer, Vaughn Marshall. Crown Towers taken on early by Russian Rock. MK's Pride, linebacker, makes up a stack of ground. Prince of Fire, Supreme Warrior, further back to El Matana towards the outside. MK's Pride in front, he's two lengths in front. El Matana charging towards the outside with linebacker. El Matana, though, went past and wins with authority. El Matana beats linebacker. Then came Jet Dark. MK's Pride ends up in fourth. 10 to 12, now linebacker moves out and comes to the outside rail. Look for Hans is still on a hard hold, but so is linebacker. The blue sleeves and cap, and Grant is not asking much of linebacker, just showing his well-being, and he's also looking extremely well and stretching out very nicely against the bit as linebacker, and very interesting to see why he worked without the blinkers. Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm very, very pleased with the, the way his prep's gone. Um, I think everyone's there. It's out there for everyone to see that it's gone well. His work at home has been tremendous. Um, uh, Sean Veal has been riding him in, in, in Grant's absence, and he's extremely happy with him. But, uh, you know, we've just, just, it's in the lap of the gods now. Uh, we've done all the hard work. Uh, I think he's in with a huge chance. Linebacker is very much definitely on my A-list. He's the horse that I fancy to give Do It Again most to do. He certainly, after finishing second last year, has an undeniable chance of grabbing the lion's share of the purse, does linebacker. You had to like his run in the Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge. And bear in mind, his gallop came just uh, some 10 days later. So, Rahil, I'll start with you. Linebacker, serious contender. Absolutely, Graham. You make him the main danger to number two, uh, Do It Again. I'll tip linebacker on top, followed by number two, Do It Again. With Grant Fanica, I think the blinkers could just be the trick with the linebacker. He wore the blinkers last time out in uh, the Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge when finishing a second behind Al Motana. He now goes over the July distance, which he went off as favourite last year behind Kometi Dung, and he's obviously better off at the weights. And I think linebacker is a serious runner. Grant Fanica, Kabord, Vaughan Marshall, they'll be eager to get grade one success, and I think linebacker is going to go extremely close to get it going one better than he did last year. Sheldon, Grand for Nick Egwin, oh so close to winning this race uh, a number of years back on Smunji Munji. That would have been a huge turner for the books. Winning it this year on linebacker would be a popular result. For my money and my opinion, number four linebacker, this is the horse they all have to beat. I think he's had a tremendous prep. The fact that they tried blinkers in the Hollywood Bets gold challenge, experimenting to see how things work out, I think that speaks volumes. He worked the other day in the gallops without the blinkers. He was hard against the steel, really traveling exceptionally well. He's got the draw, and Vaughan Marshall's out there for the victory. Let's move on to number five, Puerto Manzano, Argentinian bred son of Seek again, to be ridden by Raymond Danielson for the JJ Van Furen stable. We're going to show you his victory on the 12th of June in the Grade 3 Jubilee handicap. And then we'll show you a recording of his gallop, which took place on the high felt. Golden Pheasant is there as well with 300 to go. Perfect witness. Naval Guard is on the outside now. They're inside the final 200. Porta Manzano starting to make up ground as well. Naval Guard. Perfect witness now. Then Porta Manzano. Naval Guard on the outside. Perfect witness. Here comes Porta Manzano coming home well. Porta Manzano got there. Perfect witness. Naval Guard behind that. And then a photo for Porta. Well, there we saw Puerta Manzano, hard forward win in the Jubilee, and here's his gallop on the high felt a couple of days er later. 
last week sometime, and as you can see, he's striding out really, really nicely. Puerto Manzano, there's no doubting that he's a nice horse. He's won five times from only 15 starts, uh, but for my money, he faces a massively tough task in this race. Most definitely. I think he does have it all to do, and uh, Puerto Manzano, he doesn't form part of my shortlist, and he's a horse that I'm willing to give a miss in this lineup. And what's your take on him, Sheldon? All I've got to say is for the Verners and the entire team, lovely to have a runner in the race. If he goes close and he runs into the money or he happens to pull it off, I'll be the first one to congratulate them. But just looking at his CV and his record in that, he's also a horse that I'll pass by at this stage. Okay, so there we go. None of us are in the camp of Puerto Manzano, but he might have an important role to play in the race because if there's an absence of pace, he's well drawn, they may elect to go forward. He has done that in the past. And who knows, if he gets things his own way, he might be staying on quite nicely at the finish. Number six is the WSB Guineas winner, Zapatelis. He's also been trained on the high felt by the Brett Crawford stable, their satellite yard with James Crawford in attendance. We'll show you a rerun of his victory in the Guineas, and then we'll pick up on his gallop, which also took place on the high felt. Zapatilis, then comes super excited. Cosmic Highway is going through down on the inside. Double superlative the outside. Then Asta Manana. Supreme Warrior still goes past the 200. And it's Supreme Warrior pump and power. Zapatilis, Cosmic Highway. Supreme Warrior is digging in though. And it's Supreme Warrior Zapatilis. I'm not going to split them. Supreme Warrior Zapatilis, pump and power is on the inside. And now we're going to see Zapatilis, nice slow motion action of him galloping, being put through his paces at Reinkiesfontein on the high felt, striding out really well. The one thing we know about Zapatilis is that he's a high quality, classy, thoroughbred racehorse. Brett Crawford has always held him in high esteem and he proved that by winning the WSB Guineas. But Mike de Kock in the week made an interesting point that Zapatilis was primed to win the guineas and a couple of those behind him were perhaps just starting up their engines. We're also not 100% sure whether Zapatilis will be as effective over 2,200 meters as he was in the guineas over 1,600 meters. And for me, that is a bit of a question mark. I'll start with Sheldon. Zapatilis doesn't form part of my play, but that being said, I wouldn't be shocked if he ran a huge race. He's one of those horses where there's quite a few questions to be answered. He is rating from the half felt. He came to Hollywood Bet's Gravel. He won last time. You mentioned he was primed for that race. He's a horse who's lightly raced. He's only had the seven runs to date. So he, he's got that improvement factor to come. 53 on his back. He's not in my top four or five selections, but he won't be too far back. Rahil Zapatilis, from a quartet perspective, Massive quartet pool, great bet to catch. Are you throwing him into the mix? I think I'll throw him into that fourth position, Graham. Uh, from the three-year-old, Zapatilis is obviously the unknown three-year-old. Not quite sure what you're going to get from this individual. He was hard-ridden to win the Guineas. I think that must be said. Can just get enough to beat Supreme Warrior. As you mentioned, we're not sure if he's going to see out the trip. But if he does manage to see out the trip, I'll throw him into that fourth position for those quartets. But uh, Zapatilis, he's only been up to 1,800 when finishing third behind uh, Universal. So I'm willing to pass him by from that winning uh, selection. But obviously for the those quartets, I think Zapatilis is worth an inclusion, Graham. So let's move on to number seven, Waterbury Lane. Keegan DeMello rides for Dean Canamo, who's no stranger to the winner's enclosure on July day, carrying the silks, the famous racing silks of the Rattrays. We're going to show you Waterbury Lane running fourth in the Daily News. Now, obviously, in that same race, first was Safe Passage, second was Pomp and Power, third was Aragosta, and fourth was Waterbury Lane, nothing to choose between the second, third and fourth placed horses a long way behind the winner's safe passage. And then we'll have a look at his gallop. And Pomp and Power is clear by two or three. Safe passage. Aragosta's running on to the inside. Senso Unico is trying to close in. Waterbury Lane is charging up on the outside, and Safe Passage is getting into it. Safe passage with a rip roaring finish. He's reaching for the stars, and Safe Passage will go on. Second spot's tied. Pomp and Power or Aragosta and Waterbury Lane. Hollywood beats Durban July as well. Of course, Dean Canamare, he won it on Dynasty. 
to Dean Kanamea and Eye of the Tiger, also Dean Kanamea. And here comes Keegan Amello on the Dean Kanamea train, Waterbury Lane. He's stretching out nicely. There won't be any problems. I'm sure Dean will be very happy with this gallop as Waterbury Lane comes to the end. Waterbury Lane looked well when galloping. He moved well when galloping and he ran a crack in the Daily News 2000. Again, the point was made that he turned for home in the Daily News 2000, about two and a half lengths behind Safe Passage and ran as quickly down the home stretch as uh, Safe Passage did, but was unable to bridge the gap. Uh, Rahil, Waterbury Lane, one of the exciting three-year-olds in the lineup. For me, I can't see him turning the tables on Safe Passage, but what do you make of him? I quite like the likes, uh, the look of Waterbury Lane Graham. I think 20, 20 to 1, 25 to 1, that's some tremendous value about this, this individual. And I just want to touch on uh, the form lines with the pomp and power. He's taken on pomp and power three times, and pomp and power has finished in front of him on all three occasions. But he's made up ground, he's made up lengths on pomp and power. And if we have a look at the daily news run, he was finish off, finishing off his race really well, where pomp and power was just staying on. So I think he will have the better of pomp and power, it's just whether he can get the better of safe passage. And I think over the 2,200 meter trip, he received one and a half kgs. He was only beaten two, two and a quarter lengths. So I think he could possibly get the better of safe passage. And 20 to one compared to four to one, I'd much rather be on the 20, 20 to one shot in the form of Waterbury Lane. But a confidence coming through there from Rahil for Waterbury Lane. It would be unbelievable moments if the rat race silks were to be carried to victory. What do you make of Waterbury Lane? Well, you've got to look at Waterbury Lane and say the connections would have been very happy that he settled off a no pace last time out. Pomp and Power was obviously quite keen up front. There was no speed on. Waterbury Lane's 400 to finish was a second quicker than Pomp and Power. 2200 is stretching him a bit. So I think it's, it's going to come down to whether he sees out the distance or not. I'll be happy if he runs just off them for the rat rays. It'll be a lovely story, but he won't be in my top few. Well, there we go. That's Waterbury Lane. And one thing is for certain, there'll be no lack of confidence from the saddle. There isn't a hotter jockey around at the moment than Waterbury Lane's big race pilot, Keegan DeBello. Let's move on to number eight, Pomp and Power, the Cape Derby winner. Again, we're going to show you the daily news. We're going to show you it, in fact, three times because when we get to safe passage. So focus on the different horses as you watch these reruns. We'll have a look at his gallop and we'll hear from Justin Snake. And Pomp and Power is clear by two or three. Safe passage. Aragosta's running on to the inside. Senso Unico is trying to close in. Waterbury Lane is charging up on the outside and Safe Passage is getting into it. Safe passage with a rip-roaring finish. He's reaching for the stars and Safe Passage will go on. Second spot's tied. Pomp and Power or Aragosta and Waterbury Lane. Six to one. He was the original favourite, and Richard Ferris trying to hide him behind the stable companion. But for how long? He'll have to come alongside, and now Pomp and Power hooks out, and the stable companion's got no answer. He has Pomp and Power, and he's going to only be able to race one way. Let rip on the big day. Hollywood bets Durban July, unless they come up with a miracle. We did it. We did a, 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 a gallop where we wanted to get everything out uh, of him, the bad behavior, everything like that. Um, in the gallop, we specifically put um, Grant on the pacemaker in the gallop and then eased it up uh, quite quickly so that then he could react. And I thought he reacted brilliantly. He kept his head, he, he all of a sudden tanked and Richard fought him a bit and then he settled in the gallop. Very, very uh, happy with that. I know the, the lot of the commentators and that had a lot to say. Um, but I, I read it completely different, and I say that that was just what we were looking for. The whole idea was to put up a bit of a fight on, on the gallop, to go back, do what we need to do, and have him ready for the big day. So I think he'll give a good account of himself, and, and you can expect a, a good run. Uh, we didn't take the, the daily news lightly. I thought it was horrendous to watch, uh, and I thought the gallop was much better. So if you go watch both uh, uh, workouts, and and you'll see the improvement that we've already made and there'll be more improvements on Durban July Day. Certainly one of the most talked about runners in this year's Hollywood Bets Durban July lineup for a whole variety of reasons. His temperament, his behavior, the fact that he was so courageous to stay on for second in the Daily News at 2000 despite having 
pulled so hard in the early stages? Will he go to the front? Will they try and restrain him from off the pace? There are all these questions that are being asked about pomp and power. That he has the ability to win, there's no doubt. He was a facile winner of the Cape Derby earlier this year. I'm going to start with you, Sheldon. Pomp and power, not easy to assess because we don't know how he's going to behave on the day. That is the big question. Obviously, watching the gallop, I know Justin Snaith and the team, they do phenomenal work back home. They've done the behind-the-scenes homework. They'll have him spot on for the big race day. The big crowd for me is obviously a little bit of a concern as a, ma a majority of the analysts out there have said. So we're going to see Pomp and Power. As you mentioned, he's got the ability to win a race of this nature. There's no doubt about it. They're going to do all the homework behind the scenes. Richard Faree, 53 on his back. He's got to be a huge runner. And it comes down to how Pomp and Power behaves on the day. Pomp and Power races in the colours of Greg Vorts. He owns it in partnership with Etienne Braun and Mar Shirtliff. Mar Shirtliff has already tasted uh, July success with Marinaresco, of course with Pocket Power as well, all those years ago. But Greg is a massive investor in the game. He deserves to win a race like this. How do you see Pomp and Power going, Rahil? I think Pomp and Power could uh, be held by the likes of Waterbury Lane and uh, Safe Passage Graham. I'm not. I'm not sure if he's going to settle. I think it's a question that many of us are, we want to know the answer to, but we'll have to just wait and see how he does go on Durban July Day and Pomp and Power. I think this is a bit of a tough ask for him and he's always said, I give more of a place chance to than, than a winning chance. The enigmatic Pomp and Power class, certainly he has. How will he be able on the day? That is the key question that only the race will answer. We move on to number nine, Jet Dark. Another powerhouse from the Justin Snaith stable. Jet Dark, a handsome, big son of Trippy. We're going to watch the Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge again when he ran third, flying from the back of the field. Then we'll watch his gallop and once again hear from Justin Snaith. Towers taken on early by Russian Rock. MK's Pride line back up, makes up a stack of ground. Prince of Fire, Supreme Warrior, further back to El Matana towards the outside. MK's Pride in front, he's two lanes in front. El Matana charging towards the outside with line backer. El Matana, though, went past and wins with authority. El Matana beats line backer. Then came Jet Dark. MK's Pride ends up in fourth. Looks as though its tongue is hanging out. I don't think it's got a tongue tie on, so we'll have to just check that if it's its tongue. And it's going nice and comfortably as they come down to the last 300 meters. So here's Jet Dark. And on a loose rein, Alda de Maya, as it comes down to the finishing post at the end of their gallop, it is Jet Dark in the Hollywood Bed Durban July gallops. Yeah, we're well, looking at Shimunga jumped off him at the last minute, which was a bit disappointing, and uh, we were then stuck without a rider. So um, I was very fortunate that uh, Bernard was willing to make the flight out last minute from Mauritius. Um, and, and quite frankly, I think it's maybe a blessing in disguise. Shimunga was battling to get him out the starting. He fell out the starting stores in the gold challenge, which was very disappointing for us. We were way out of our ground. And then he ran on so strongly. So. Uh, Great prep into uh, the Hollywood Durban July. Probably one of the better preps into the race. If you now look at how it's panned out, spot on and uh, we'll run a, a big race on the day. I think uh, Bernard Faydurb is a big plus for Jet Dark. He has won the July under top weight when he won it a few years ago on Marinaresco and he'll get the best out of Jet Dark. Of that I have no doubts. Whether Jet Dark is good enough to carry top weight to victory over this extended trip of 2200 meters. He certainly ran a cracker in the WSB Cape Town Met back in January. He's not a horse you can take lightly. He's a massively impressive uh, individual. Rahil, Jet Dark, he will be running on at the end. He most definitely will be, and I think he will be able to see the 2200 meter trip out. It's just whether or not he gets there in time with Bernard aboard. I think uh, Jet Dark, he could just be one of the dark horses in the race, and a horse at around 16 to, 16 to 1 in the market. I think he could be worth an each way play in the lineup. But to, uh, as you mentioned, Graham, whether he is good enough to carry 60 kgs to victory, we'll have to wait and find out. Sheldon, I really, um, I'm not taking Jet Dark lightly. I think he does shape up 
with his class and his character and his powerful finish and with Bernard Faderb in the irons and his perfect prep as we heard there from Justin Snaith. He's definitely, he's not in my top four, but he's on my A-list. He's a runner. This horse, Jet Dark, if he turns it on and the pace is genuine, you can give him a lively each way chance. They had Crown Towers in as a pacemaker last time out, but if you look at the actual time, it was almost four seconds outside of the course record. So it looked like they went quite hard, but I think he wants a real good gallop. If he gets the gallop that he deserves, he can win this race. 10 Save Passage, the current favourite for the 2022 5 million Rand Hollywood Bets Durban July facile winner of the Daily News 2000. Muzi Yeni retains the ride for the Mike de Kock stable. The Drakenstein stud, what a season they've had already. And this would be the cherry on the top. We're going to watch that Daily News clip once again. This time, of course, we're focusing on the winner of that race, Save Passage. And then we'll see his gallop again with Aragosta. And Pomp and Power is clear by two or three. Safe passage. Aragosta's running on to the inside. Senso Unico is trying to close in. Waterbury Lane is charging up on the outside, and Safe Passage is getting into it. Safe passage with a rip roaring finish. He's reaching for the stars, and Safe Passage will go on. Second spot's tied. Pomp and Power or Aragosta and Waterbury Lane. Safe passage. Top win is the Silvano Muzi Yeni Mike de Kock for Drakenstein stud comes around and Muzi's just gone but maybe a neck half length in front and he looks across to Warren Kennedy and Warren will also just push on now and let's see what happens here Aragosta and safe passage and there's absolutely nothing between the two of them Aragosta at 14 and a half to one that's on the far side and number 10 safe passage now, when you consider the fact uh, that Mike de Kock went on record as saying that Safe Passage was well short of his best in the Daily News 2000 and that he, as the trainer, was blown away by his performance, that there'd be more improvement to come, Rahil, there's no doubt in my mind that he is the best three-year-old coming into the race. He could certainly well be, Graham, and he's been priced up as the early favourite for the Hollywood Bets Dub in July. And as you mentioned, he was 70% fit going into the lineup, but he proved that He's, he's really top class and going into the race, he will be at peak fitness. He has his 10th run. He is already a six-time winner. And Safe Passage, the way he turned it on was very impressive. And he did receive five points for that uh, victory. He has to concede one and a half kgs to the thrills in this lineup. But I think he's capable of doing that. And Safe Passage, he's a horse that must be in the mix. Well, I think the increase in weight from the Daily News relative to those that he beat, if you assume as Mike de Kock has put on record that he was short of his best and he makes further improvement. I think that'll cancel out the penalty. I think also, Sheldon, that he's got the perfect draw because he's got nine on his inside, he's got the other half on his outside, and Muzi and he's got all kinds of options. That is the key. When you've got options from that type of draw, if they go too slow on the inside, you can move around. If they're too slow on the outside or too fast, you can slipstream exactly where you want. I think that's the perfect draw for safe passage. And who better than Mark de Kock to have as the trainer? And after listening to that interview, when I did it with him about his last win beforehand, there's any amount of improvement to come. Big runner. Massive runner, safe passage, and for my money, the leading three-year-old in the race. 11 Bulgarian, the 2020 winner of the Hollywood Bets Durban July. Another string to the Justin Snaith bow. He's got five runners in the race. Let's just pause for a moment and remind you that Justin Snaith has won this race five times. One more. He comes equal with Terence Millard, six and the record holder is, of course, Sid Laird with seven. So Justin Snaith is inching ever closer and with five runners in the race. He will be hoping that one of them can pull it off for him. Can it be Bulgarian? We're going to show you a rerun of his race at Kenilworth on the 5th of June when he ran second. We'll have a look at his gallop, which took place at Sommerfeld, and then we'll hear again from Justin Snaith. Unwinder run two, Veronica Mars is in behind those. Captain of Stealth, Rocking Ringo, Belgorian between runners. There's plenty of chances. Hyde Park is deeper out. It's Rocking Ringo has his head in front. Belgorian towards the inside is coming to make a race of it. Rocking Ringo hanging tough. Belgorian trying all he can along the inside. He's coming home strongly. Belgorian comes home strongly, but Rocking Ringo lost just long enough. Belgorian was back in second.
Here we see Bulgarian being put through his paces, uh, just going easy canter. Bear in mind that he only recently arrived in uh, KwaZulu-Natal, and this uh, little workout took place shortly after the float arrived at Sommerfeld. <laughs> so, um, Bulgarian needs a, a very quiet ride. He needs, he needs to be put to sleep a little bit. His comeback runs have just got better and better. He's, he's in good form at home, and no better jockey than Pierre Stratum. Well, Bulgarian does appear to be in a good space. I wasn't too concerned about the fact that he got beat by Rockin Ringo over 1,500 meters, I think it was last time. I think the race showed that he's in a good space. He looked uh, in good form when being cantered along the sand tracks at Summerfield. But I think the weight on this occasion is going to get the better of Bulgarian. He doesn't form part of my play. He doesn't form part of my play either, Graham. He does race off a two points lower mark than he did uh, last year and he has to carry one and a half kgs more. So I think Bulgarian, it's going to be difficult for him. He's drawn in the exact same gate that he was last, time, last year out, and uh, I'll give him a miss this time out. Sheldon, it's not been easy for Bulgarian after winning the, the July in 2020. His uh, racing career has been very interrupted. He's obviously got a big weight to carry. Uh, he looks to be in a good space, but where do you see him finishing? I think he'll be in sixth or seventh position. Looking at his prep, he's had his two preps in Cape Town. He ran behind seventh gear and then behind Rocking Ringo last time out. But when you put Justin Snaith and Pierre Stratum together, you'd be foolish to ignore. Well, absolutely, and it's fantastic. Whatever the outcome, it's fantastic that Pierre Stratum is back in action and has a ride in the 2022 Hollywood Best Durban July. Number 12 is Sparkling Water. One of four runners from the powerful Mike de Kock stable and the only filly in the race and the last filly to win it was Igugu in 2011, also trained by Mike de Kock. We're going to show you sparkling water in action when running second at Turpentine on the 30th of April and we'll pick up on her gallop. Then comes Puerto Manzano. They followed by Zeus. Further back and running to second base. It's Asterix who pops his nose in front. Comet de Ding is forced to fight. Then comes Puerto Manzano and Sparkling Water. Warming in between runners. Asterix the leader. Sparkling Water's flying. Sparkling Water picks up Asterix. Sparkling Water. Oh, Asterix, it's very close. Sparkling Water. 400 metres to go, and now Muzieni hooks El Mutana out, and he just comes gliding up to Sparkling Water. Sparkling Water's on the left, black body and red cap, but you can see El Mutana. Muzieni is just a passenger aboard this express train as they come to the post. Sparkling Water and El Mutana. Sparkling Water has many fans out there. She's short in the market. She's been solidly backed throughout the exchanges and uh, clearly off near bottom weight as a four-year-old. She seems to be well handicapped. I fancy that she will turn the tables on Asterix this time round. But Sheldon, can she win the July? I've got my doubts. I'd love to see her run a big race in that, but my opinion is she'll battle to win the Hollywood Bets Durban July. And Rahil, obviously, Sparkling Water, as I mentioned, has many, many fans out there. There are many people who are talking her up. Uh, there's a big wraparound for, for, for Sparkling Water. Mike DeCock himself, I think, is quite realistic. He's got some big guns in the race, and, and Sparkling Water is going to get a true test and be measured against those. Uh, but what do you make of Sparkling Water? Well, Graham, I've tipped Sparkling Water in third position in my uh, selections. I think that uh, with 53 and a half kgs, uh, she's a runner that must be included into all bets. She really turns it on in the closing stages of the race, and there's no doubts about the trip. She's going to see out every inch of the 2,200 meter trip. Samanga Kamalo aboard once again, and that was a cracking run behind Asterix last time out. And I think she could uh, definitely turn the form around with Asterix, and she's a horse for those trifectas and quartets. I think she's a worthy inclusion. I absolutely agree with you. I think you have to respect sparkling water. You know, she can go from 1,400 meters all the way up to 2,800 meters. With that kind of versatility, the staying prowess and the speed, uh, that's a perfect combination to be a big runner in any July, and certainly in this year, the 2022 Hollywood Bets Durban July. Number 13, the defending champion is Comedy Dung. We're going to show you a rerun of last year's race. We got up to beat Linebacker, and then we'll show you his gallop.
Again, looking for a way through. Got the green light to the outside. Linebacker, Sovereign Spirit. Cometi Ding on the outside. Got the green light. Linebackers on the inside. Cometi Ding and linebacker. Got the green light. A three-way go. But Cometi Ding has his head in front. Cometi Ding. Brilliant stuff. From in second, linebacker. Got the green light. And do it again. One of the more impressive gallops this morning. Kometi Ding doing everything that has been asked of him. Coming down to the last 300 metres. Of course, last year he carried 53 kilograms. This year, plus 7 kilograms. He'll be carrying 60 kgs. Has he got it what it takes to become the living legend? Yes, Kometi Ding. Not many horses in the previous 125 runnings of this great race have won Back to back, Comedy Ding, Michelle Ricks, Harold Crawford, Gavin Arena, Ashwin Reynolds. They'll be trying to do just that. Last year he raced from the 18 draw, this year he races from the 13 draw. But Sheldon, he's got a lot more weight to carry and he looks to have it all to do against some of his uh, opposi opposition here. He's up 7 kgs from last year. Last year he carried 53. He's up to the 60 this year. Do it again at the weights. Has him stone cold. And as you saw on the rerun there, do it again was very, very unlucky. But when Cometi Ding galloped, he looked flashy. He was outstanding. He did put up a terrific gallop. And yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, he has it all to do at the weights, but not by a wide margin he certainly got uh, it all to do against linebacker and do it again but his gallop was so impressive that he looks to have put that disappointing high felt campaign behind him he looks to be back to his absolute best rail so i've tipped him fourth because i do think he warrants utmost respect i think he's a horse that has to be given uh, the utmost respect here graham he is the defending champion of the hollywood bets durban july and he's drawn in gate number 13, Gavin Lurina aboard. 60 kgs, whether he can concede weight to the rest of the individuals, I'm not quite sure. And Komiti Dung, personally, I don't think he can go back to back. And he's a horse that I'll, I'll include into those trifectas and quartets. But in terms of retaining his uh, crown, I don't think he'll be able to do that. Number 14 is uh, the SA Classic winner, Red Saxon. Of course, uh, it's such a tragedy that Rachel Vedica will not be making history as the first female rider to ever compete in the Hollywood Bets Durban July as a result of the injury she sustained on Monday. Her place on Red Saxon has been taken by Sereno Mudley. We can never take away from the fact that he is the winner of the SA Classic and that he did beat Safe Passage in that race. Uh, but I have my doubts as to whether you'll be able to confirm that. But let's show you the running of the 2022 essay Classic back at Turfatine on the 5th of March. Inside, then came Red Saxon. It's Captain Lannister out in front. William Robertson, safe passage, moving quickly. Down the inside is Red Saxon. These are the ones that count. Captain Lannister, Red Saxon and safe passage are coming quickly. Safe passage and Red Saxon pick it up close to home. Safe passage, Red Saxon. Red Saxon and safe passage. It's close, Red Saxon. Red Saxon for Joey Sobers. won it from safe passage. Captain Lannister, super excited and Aragosta. And as they come homeward bound with just on 450 metres to go, Red Saxon just looms large and comes cruising through. Something of the equipment of the stable companion might have just popped out at around the 450. You would have noticed something popped out there. But Red Saxon will focus on those white sleeves and cap with a distinguishing... There was a lot of rain on the high felt at that time when he beat Safe Passage in the, the SA Classic. He's not going to get a soft track this week. Glorious weather in Durban and the forecast for July Day, Saturday, the 2nd of July, is really good. Like I said, Rahil, you can't take away, you can't take it away from him. He beat Safe Passage in the Classic. Um, but the proximity of the third horse that day makes me question that entire form line. Of course, we've seen Safe Passage come from there and win the Daily News 2000. Does it bring into question mark the three-year-old crop against the older horses, I'm not sure if that one race does that, but I would be shocked if Red Saxon was to confirm that sort of form with safe passage. I'd be shocked if he were to win this race, Graham, or even finish in the top four. I think he's got it all to do. He's a two-time winner, and he's on a mark of 1-1-8. I think after he ran second to safe passage in the Ding, uh, in the Ding Gans, he was penalised, and then when he won the Derby as well, the Classic, rather, he was penalised as well. So Red Saxon, I think he's got it all to do. Uh, at 53 kgs on a mark of 118 against the three-year-olds.
I've got to agree. Uh, Joe Soma, you'd love him to have a winner in this type of race. He's such a likeable gentleman, Joe Soma. But as far as Red Saxon goes, as you mentioned, the rain and all that sort of stuff, he'd like a bit more juice in the ground, and I don't think he's going to get that. Number 15 is second base, one of the long shots in the race. The four-year-old uh, son of Gimme the Green Light, but he has won a couple of graded stakes races uh, this season. He's trained on the high field by J.J. Van Furen. We're going to show you the race on the 26th of March, which he won, and then his high felt gallop. Popped its nose in front. Second base, Johnny Hero. Zol Zol, one pace, but it's second base, who's got a length advantage. Sparkling water in second, Johnny Hero. Zol Zol, he's starting to rattle back, but second base just got the call in the Colorado King Stakes. Zol Zol, sparkling water, good finish. Second base. Second base has beaten Zol Zol. Here we're watching the gallop of second base. Uh, this was at Turfentain, the Verner's Silks nearest us. Just being put through his paces is the four-year-old son of Gimme the Green Light and obviously stretching out quite nicely. As I mentioned, he is, of course, a multi-graded stakes winner of the season. And the interesting thing out of that clip is he had sparkling water behind him. Zol Zol ran second, sparkling water further back. So on the pure evidence of that form, if you like sparkling water, well, why don't you like second base? He was hard ridden for that victory, Graham, when beating the Zol Zol and Zol Zol and Sparkling Water. They came late on in the day and the line just came in time for second base. I think he's got it all to do. And uh, him, second base and the stable companion, Puerto Manzano, the horses that I think they're going to find it difficult in this lineup. I think he's 54 and a half kgs on the back. He's a 66 to one shot, one of the longer shots in a race, but a very tough ask for second base. Every now and then, of course, in this magnificent race, being a handicap, some years vintage fields, some years perhaps a little bit more open. We've had upsets along the way. Can second base do that to us in uh, 2022? I don't believe he can win the Hollywood Bets July. He's a good son of giving the green light. He's done exceptionally well for the connections, winning seven races. If you got a ticket, you got a chance, but he's not for me. Number 16, another De Kock runner, the winner of the Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge. El Mathana, the big question is, will he stay? So let's have a look at his victory again in the Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge on the 11th of June when he beat linebacker and he beat Jet Dock, but they were swamping him at the line. But that said, El Mathana himself hit the line hard. It was a peach of a ride, a peach of a win. And then we'll have a look at his gallop. Crown Towers taken on early by Russian Rock. MK's Pride, linebacker, makes up a stack of ground. Prince of Fire, Supreme Warrior, further back to El Matana towards the outside. MK's Pride in front, he's two lengths in front. El Matana charging towards the outside with linebacker. El Matana, though, went past and wins with authority. El Matana beats linebacker. Sparkling water. 400 meters to go, and now Muzieni hooks El Mutana out, and he just comes gliding up to Sparkling Water. Sparkling Water's on the left, black body and red cap, but you can see El Mutana. Muzieni is just a passenger aboard this express train as they come. There is absolutely no doubt that El Mutana oozes class. His victory in a strong Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge is reflective of that class and that ability. He held off linebacker and he held off Jet Dark. But Sheldon, the key question is, and I'm not sure that Mike DeCock himself knows the answer to this question. I was listening the other day to Samanga Kamalo chatting about Al Mathada. He thinks he could get the trip. Callan Murray obviously flies back from Australia to ride the four-year-old son of Deep Field, but I think Again, I think Mike de Kock's being open-minded and realistic. Yes, there's a chance he might stay, but you'll never know if you don't try. Uh, but I think it is still a question mark in his mind. It's certainly a question mark in my mind. Is it a question mark in your mind? Yes, it is. Despite having all the attributes of being a very good horse, he's got a 50% win strike rate. When he ran over the 2,000 metres, he was soundly beaten. But as Kevin Shea said, Mark de Kock will get them to stay any trip. <laughs> Raya, where do you put El Mathana in the, in, the, in the makeup of things? I think in terms of the top six, I'd, uh, I wouldn't include him into those top six, but after that, he, he must be a horse that if he does manage to see the trip out, he could finish seventh or eighth, but uh, I think he's got it all to do. The question mark is a trip with all of us, and 
Mike DeCock as well. So we'll have to wait and see if he does see the trip out, but no doubt between 14 to 1600, that's his game. The trouble is we can't wait and see. We've got to make up our minds what our opinion is beforehand. There's no good waiting until after the race. To, and uh, you know what I'm saying is, and I'm throwing it back to the viewers out there. If you think El Mathana will stay, then he's a must for all your bets. If like me and perhaps my colleagues as well don't believe him will stay, then I'm happy to brass him and be proven wrong on the day. Wouldn't be the first time we're wrong. We get proven wrong more times in this game than we get proven right. But I don't believe El Mathana will stay. Number 17 is Asterix, the Premier's Champion Challenge winner, the five-year-old son of Vercingetorix, chained by Paul Peter, who saddled more than 200 winners this season. JP van der Merwe, who's got a, a Met victory on his CV, takes the ride. We're going to show you that race again, the Premier's Champions Challenge, on the 30th of April, when he got home narrowly in front of sparkling water, and then we'll show you his gallop. Then comes Puerto Manzano, they followed by Zeus, further back and running to second base, it's Asterix who pops his nose in front, Comet de Ding is forced to fight. Then comes Puerto Manzano and Sparkling Water, warming in between runners, Asterix the leader, Sparkling Water's flying, Sparkling Water picks up Asterix, Sparkling Water, oh Asterix, it's very close. Well, here we see Asterix uh, being put through his paces at Turfentine as part of his preparation for an attack on the 2022 Hollywood Best Durban July. And there's certainly lots to like as we listen to his conditioner, Paul Peter. Yes, uh, JP won the President's Challenge with him. They, get, they seem to get on well. The horse is in a good space. Uh, you know what? It's not a shock. It wasn't a shock for him winning that race. We always thought uh, he's a decent sort. And you know what? I think he, he, he's a, a good quartet chance here. Good quartet chance. Uh that's uh, Paul Peters' assessment of Asterix. He's got a wide draw to overcome, but that's uh, been done before. In fact, many these days believe that if you're drawn out wide, your chances are enhanced. I can't have him, but you can't again. Like we said with Ref Saxon, the winner of the Classic, you can't take away the fact that he did win the Premier's Champions Challenge. And he had sparkling water behind him. He had comedy dung behind him. He had flying carpet behind him. He had many top horses behind him when winning that race. He did win it at 66 to 1, but I'm not in his camp, Rail. I think he got obviously heavily penalized and he's carrying a significant amount of weight. He's got an awkward draw and uh, he's form at Hollywood Bets Gravel though. Can't be faulted. Two starts, a win and a second. So he's no stranger to this part of the world. It certainly can't be faulted, Grandma. And as you mentioned, two starts for a win and a second, but I, th I think this is a very tough ask for Asterix. I'm not, I'm not convinced that he's a grade one horse. I know he did win last time out and it was a gutsy performance getting the better of sparkling water and uh, he's a seven time winner but whether he's good enough to win the Hollywood Best Durban July I'm not convinced. He hasn't raced since winning on the 30th of April Sheldon but we saw him gallop there and he was put through his paces and it was good it seemed to be very very good work and uh, JP van der Merwe right jockey winning team winning combination any chance you give Asterix of finding a place in that quartet? I'm going to turn my back on him now. I liked him quite a lot last time. I caught him right last time. I've been following him, so he came through. I'll give him some carrots afterwards, but I can't see him winning. I mean, you got some of the 66 to 1 last time, so he owes you absolutely nothing, and you'll leave it in the bank and watch him run. Nothing wrong with those sort of tactics. The last of the 18 runners is number 18, Flying Carpet. Now, when you watch that clip of Asterix winning the Premier's Champions Challenge, we're going to show you a different clip for Flying Carpet. But you saw him running on very steadily at the line to get fourth placing. He's only got 53 and a half on his back. He's a Summer Cup winner. He's drawn at 18, the same gate that Comedy Ding jumped out of last season. He's trained by Sean Terry, who won the race in 2012 and 2013. But we're going to show you Flying Carpet winning the Summer Cup back on the 30th of November, 2021 got four to go so does Mel Moose is further back Johnny Hero running on but it's still Porto Manzano from Majestic Mozart Golden Pheasant behind that flying carpet is looking to get into the race so is Johnny Hero Asterix behind that it's now wide open Majestic Mozart Golden Pheasant to the outside flying carpet it's coming home well up the inside Majestic Mozart and flying carpet they get to the line flying carpet got there Majestic Mozart Golden Pheasant where was Warren Martinez 
Here we're watching flying carpet being put through his paces at Reinkisfontein as part of his preparation for the big race. Um, and he's working quite nicely. There's no doubt about that. Flying carpet is such a difficult horse to assess because obviously since winning the Summer Cup, he's also been beaten in two progress plates, uh, races which he looked to have at his mercy. Yes, I was. He, he was prepping. Obviously, we would have all expected him to win a race like that, but once they came out of the gates and it was a steady canter and he, we didn't want to send him to the front in a prep run, uh, we were always going to be in trouble in terms of the pace, but he did finish it off in a good in good fashion, and uh, I'm, I'm happy with his preparation. Sheldon, as I was saying, you know, this horse seems to relish the challenge when, when thrown in the deep end, and when offered an opportunity of winning a simple race, he shirks the issue and doesn't get it done. He's been beaten in two progress plates coming into this race, but we saw in the Premier's Champions Challenge, which was run at Wait for Age, him running on really strongly at the end. Is he a little bit of a, a mudlark, do you think? He could be one of those horses who could upset the apple cart. Now, when you put Sean Terry and Kelvin Abib together in the grade ones recently, they've got an amazing strike rate. So he's a horse that, although you, you're not going to go big on him, he's a horse that you can factor in. Rahil, do you give him any kind of a chance? Are you factoring him to your trifectas and quartets? Yes, Graham, he's a horse that I'll include into those trifectas and quartets. I think he's a horse that can make those dividends pay. And for those six places that Hollywood bits do offer, I think a flying cup at around 50 to 1 in the market, he could be a horse that you do take those six places on, and he could possibly be doing his best work at the finish over the 2,200-meter trip. Well, there you go, my colleagues, Rahil and Sheldon, offering a bit of respect for the chances of number 18 flying carpet. The wide draw is not a concern. He's got a nice handy galloping weight. He won a handicap, grade one handicap before. He won it in the Summer Cup, beating Majestic Mozart, and there were a few others behind him on that occasion. So, if you're thinking about throwing a few roughies into the back end of your quartets, because that's a lovely bet to catch, then you could do worse than throw in flying carpet. We're going to close out with our Lala selections, and uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to start with mine, and uh, no secrets here. I'm very much in the camp of number two, Do It Again. He's my chop choice, and my bet suggested is an each-way play on Do It Again at around 12 to 1. Second, number four, Linebacker. Third, number 10, Safe Passage. Fourth, number 13, Comedy Ding. But as you've heard throughout this discussion, there are a few others that you do need to respect the likes of uh, Jet Dark and Sparkling Water, just to name a few. Uh, your Dlala selections? I'm going with the linebacker, Graham. The runner-up last year behind uh, Kometi Dung and hopefully can go one uh, better this year around. So linebacker to beat number two, do it again. Followed by the 12, uh, Sparkling Water and horse number seven, uh, Waterbury Lane, who I do like a bit of at 20 to 1 in the market. And uh, my suggested bet is an exacta box with horse number two, four, seven, and at 12. So those four numbers, exact a box. And over to you, Sheldon, your Dlala selections. Thanks, Rahil. You'll see I'll be in the camp of do it again. So number two, do it again. A new era looking to make further history from number four, linebacker, 10, safe passage, and number eight, pomp and power. Exact a box, one, two, four, eight, 10, and 13. So really looking forward to the Hollywood bets. July, it's gonna be an awesome day. And Graham, all we've got left to say is bring it on. Yeah, bring it on. The Afrikaans for that, of course, is Comedy Ding. Both Sheldon and I believe that Do It Again can become the first ever three-time winner of the Hollywood Bets Durban July come Saturday, the 2nd of July. But if only it was as easy as that. Whatever the outcome, we trust you will have a fantastic day here at Hollywood Bets Gravel on Saturday. Hi, I'm Trevor, the CEO of the SAME Foundation. The donation we received from Interbase helped us in procuring vital, life-saving medical equipment and PPE for Tigerberg and Huitiskia hospitals in the Western Cape. Um, this was while the Western Cape was the epicenter of the pandemic. If you'd like to get in touch or assist us in these projects, you can get hold of us on our website, which is www.samefoundation.org.za, Facebook and Instagram or LinkedIn.